In this video, I'm going to show you how to check the valve clearances on a 2014 GSXR 750. Uh, as you can see, I do have the uh, motor removed from the frame as I'm replacing the frame. But you don't have to do that. You can uh, check the valve clearances and even set the valve clearances while the motor is still in the frame. So I'm just going to show you how to do it with the motor out of the frame. The first step, we have to remove this cover right here. We can rotate the, the crankshaft to position the cams in the proper position so we can check the valve clearances of both the intake and exhaust valves. So first we're going to remove the cap. This is an 8 millimeter hex head wrench. So we have that cap removed. What we're going to do now is pull the spark plugs, pull the, the valve cover, and then that way we can rotate the engine much more freely without the spark plugs in the cylinders. So let's go ahead and pull the spark plugs now. Here's the valve cover, and here are your spark plug boots. We're going to remove these. The left-hand side of the engine is one, two, three, and four. That's your cylinder order and your spark plug order. I have a paint marker and make sure we get these spark plug boots back in the same position. I'm going to mark these one, two, three, and four. So we put them back in the same order. My yellow paint marker was dead so I had to get a green one. So we have one, two, three, and four marked. So now, how do we get the uh, spark plug boots off of the spark plugs? You very gently lift. There's a little seal there. And as you see, if we release that seal, you can now pull the spark plug boots off of the spark plugs. We'll put these boots off to the side. We have all the spark plug boots off of the plugs. Now we can pull the spark plugs out and I'm going to replace with new spark plugs so we really don't have to be concerned about the order. I have a 16 millimeter deep socket on a long extension. Let's go ahead and pull those plugs out. If you don't have a spark plug with a rubber boot on the inside to grab the plug, just take some paper towel, stick it inside the spark plug socket, and then you can pull the plugs out. We have the spark plugs out now. Let's go ahead and pull the uh, valve cover now. Now we're going to re remove the uh, the valve cover itself. And notice there's one, two, three, four, five, six hex head bolts in the valve cover. This is a six millimeter hex head socket. So we're going to loosen these. Get yourself a rubber mallet or what's called a dead blow hammer and we're going to lightly tap. Don't pry on this, you'll damage the seal.
And as you see, we can now, just by gently tapping the valve cover, we can now pull that cover off. And there's a gasket underneath there. We don't want to uh, damage that gasket. Technically, you're supposed to put a brand new gasket and a new O-rings and new cam seals on there. We'll see how they're looking. We'll probably have to order new ones. If not, we'll uh, use the old ones. But chances are, it's always a good idea to replace them with new gaskets. As you can see on this end, there's little half moon pieces of the gasket. You want to gently remove these without damaging them. I'm going to take a screwdriver and very careful not pry on any metal surfaces. We're just going to push up on the gasket gently. I did not touch any of the metal surfaces. I just pried up on the rubber gasket and now we can remove that gasket. If you look on top, you'll see the other rubber gaskets. These will all have to be replaced as well. Now what we can do is we can uh, rotate the crankshaft to put the two cams in the proper position to check a portion of the intake and a portion of the exhaust valves. Then once we check those and we rotate the crank another 360 degrees and then check the remaining intake and exhaust valves. I'll show you how to do that. Now that the spark plugs have been removed, we can come in through the side cover. There's a bolt in here and there's a little pin and there's a line on that gear. What we're going to do, this is a 14 millimeter socket and we're going to rotate the engine clockwise and we're going to line up that line with this little pin. After we get it lined up I'll move the camera in so you can see that. Once it's in that position we have to come in and check the cams to make sure they're in the appropriate position. If it isn't, then we have to rotate another 360 degrees. And I'll show you what those cam positions are supposed to look like. Here's a diagram of the back side of the cams with the line setting on the crank set at the little pin notice that the intake notch is at the 12 o'clock position and the exhaust valve the little notch is looks like around 5 to 10 o'clock and I've double checked those and they are at that position so now when the the cams are in this position we could check the intake number two and number four and number three and number four exhaust valves. So let's go ahead and measure that with the feeler gauge. Here's looking at the inside of the inspection cover. If you notice, there's a little pin on the right hand side in and what it's pointing to is a little black line. And the little black line is pointing exactly at that pin. That uh, is the indication or one of the indications that the uh, the cams are in the correct position. The other indication is the two intake and exhaust valve notches that I show you in the previous diagram. Those are now set. What we'll do is we'll rotate all the way after we measure the the valve clearance we're going to then go all the way around check the others and then we're going to double check both intake and exhaust again to make sure that they're right. So let's go ahead and measure those. 
with the crank in the present position. We're supposed to be able to check number two and number four va uh, valves. So this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So we're going to check two and four on the intake side and three and four on the exhaust side. Let's get our feeler gauge. Okay, the specs for the intake valves are 0 0.08 millimeters to 0.18 millimeters. So I have, I've already tried point 076 and that fits. Now I have a 0.102. So I'm going to check two and that fits very nicely. Snug, so we have two and four. So 0.102 fits nicely. So now we have, the next up is 0.127. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that now. 0.127 will not go in. So again, the maximum or the the range of the intake valves is 0 0.08 millimeters to 0.18 millimeters. So 0 0.102 fit and 0.127 did not fit. So that means on the intake valve of 2 and 4 on this side the measurements are within spec. Now let's go ahead and check the exhaust valve. Now the exhaust valves have a different clearance. The exhaust valve is 0.18 millimeters to 0.28 millimeters. So the exhaust valves are slightly larger in clearance. So let's go ahead and pull the feeler gates out and we'll check the exhaust side. Now on the exhaust side we're going to be measuring valves number three and four. We checked in the crank with the current position. We checked valve, exhaust valves three and four. 1.127 millimeters fit on both. 152 did not fit. Again, the clearances on the exhaust valve is 0.18 millimeter to point Two eight millimeter. So three and four exhaust valves are, are too tight. So we're going to have to make a notation of that, and we're going to have to purchase some shims and uh, redo the shims on uh, three and four of the exhaust valves. Now let's rotate the engine 360 degrees, and we'll check the other sets of intake and exhaust valves. We've rotated the crank 360 degrees. And at the rear, or at the uh, the rear of the cams, uh, they are now sitting with the notches. At intake is six o'clock. Exhaust is eight o'clock. I've double checked that. Now we can check one and three valves on the intake, and one and two on the exhaust. Let's go ahead and measure those. Okay, we've checked all the intake and exhaust clearances. And we're going to do two passes on this so we make sure that we don't make any mistakes. Uh, the intakes of the valves number two and four are 0.102, they're within spec. Unfortunately, the exhausts of three and four valves are 0.127, that's under spec, uh, too tight. So the minimum is 0.18 on those. And we, we rotate. Uh, the crank 360 degrees and then we measure the intakes of uh, valves 1 and 3. Uh, 0 0.076 is too tight. Uh, 127 is fine on intake no valve number uh, 3. And unfortunately again the exhaust 1 and 2 valve is 0 0.152. Again that's, that's uh, too tight. A minimum uh, clearance on the exhaust valves are uh, 0 0.18. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate uh, the crank 360 degrees and then we're going to do a second pass measurement uh, on 
two and four and one and three and then we'll rotate another 360s and then do a three and four uh, or a one and three and one and two so we're going to do two passes on the valves to make sure that we don't make any mistakes so uh, let's rotate the crank again and take another set of measurements we went and did a second pass and uh, on intake valves two and four the measurements were the same with the first pass of 0 0.102 millimeters uh, the exhaust actually a good thing that we we did I always recommend doing a second pass uh, exhaust three and four valves originally I got 127 now I got 152 so again it's always a good idea to do a second pass but again this is still too tight minimum is supposed to be 0.18 then we got the same measurement on the after rotating 360 degrees on the crank intakes one and three were the same as the first pass 0 0.076 and 0.127 so intake is too tight and on number one and intake is um just right or okay within spec on intake three uh, on the exhaust one and two same as the first pass 0.152 for both in uh, exhaust one and two again the minimum is 0.18 so these are too tight so after doing two passes on uh, the valve clearance uh, checking uh, we're going to have to uh, pull the cams and uh, pull the uh, the lifters and then we're going to uh, measure the shims and then order some shims based on our measurements so uh, let's go ahead and start pulling the cams